from the stratosphere all the way to the deepest point on Earth, we are going all over today as we dive into the top 10 places on Earth where life should not exist. Make sure you let us know down below which one of these places surprised you the most. Starting off this list, at our number 10 spot, we have the Yellowstone Hot Spring. Yellowstone is known for its immense natural beauty, and one of the main attractions are its hot springs. Despite being attractive, however, these guys are not made for life to thrive. They are near the boiling point of water, and they are also acidic enough to dissolve nails. Definitely not the hot tub I want to be diving in, but despite this extreme environment, there are some microbes that absolutely thrive there. This teeny tiny form of life is sometimes responsible for giving the springs these super vivid otherworldly colors. It is said that the most famous of all of the microbes in Yellowstone is a heat-loving bacteria called Thermus aquaticus, which apparently makes an enzyme that researchers use in genetic labs to make copies of DNA. Other life forms found include microbes that have the ability to eat hydrogen, and at the hot springs there was even a recent discovery of a completely new phylum of bacteria that can photosynthesize. In our number 9 spot today, we have Centralia, Pennsylvania. This door to hell is located in Pennsylvania underneath the cracked asphalt of one town streets. Under these streets is an underground coal mine fire that was first set ablaze in 1962, and it just may continue burning for another couple hundred years, or maybe forever if it really is the entrance to hell like they say. It is unknown exactly how the fire was started, which is the topic of many arguments, but it quickly burned through all of the old networks of shafts and tunnels. After the fire started, sinkholes began to appear all over and steam plumes, which were full of lethal amounts of carbon monoxide, began to rise from the ground. People started to compare what was going on underneath the city to what hell must be like. Once 1984 rolled around, the government began urging people to leave the city and even claimed to help with relocating costs. But as of 2013, there were eight residents who refused to leave, and they ended up settling a lawsuit that included a $349,500 settlement and the right to reside in the town until the end of their lives. In our number 8 spot today, we have the Mariana Trench. This deep dark place is marked as the deepest point on earth, and it is not the most friendly environment. Not only is it cloaked in darkness, but it also has immense pressure that we certainly cannot withstand. Close to the surface of the ocean, we're sitting at a base of one atmospheric pressure, and when you go just 10 meters deep, that number already doubles. Considering the Mariana Trench is 11,000 meters deep, this is obviously going to increase greatly. The pressure causes the air in your body to compress, and the deeper you go, the more dense the water becomes. While the concept of increasing pressure is easy to understand, it truly is hard to conceptualize how this change happens and just how deep this trench really is. One atmospheric pressure is 1.01325 bars, which is the unit used to measure pressure. So like I mentioned before, this is where we are sitting when we are close to the surface of the ocean, but in the depths of the Mariana Trench, that number skyrockets to 1,080. 86 bars, which apparently would be the equivalent of a hundred elephants standing on you. That's a little easier to understand. So it's suddenly making a lot more sense as to why people don't journey down to the Challenger Deep very often. But despite that, this is a place that is absolutely teeming with life. In our number seven spot today, we have hydrothermal vents. Speaking of the Mariana Trench, located here is a part of the Pacific Ring of Fire, which is a tectonically active region where plates are colliding and causing subduction, which is how the trench itself was formed. Through this tectonic activity as seawater seeps downward through the oceanic crust, it gets really hot and becomes very rich in chemicals. This leads to the water becoming so buoyant that it comes back out of the surface of the seafloor, and this is what is called a hydrothermal vent. The water coming out of the vent is that same super hot, super chemically rich water, and it is an extremely important part of underwater ecosystems. The water from the vent is highly acidic and hot, while the water in the depths of the ocean is slightly basic and freezing cold. There are many different smaller species who come to the vent areas because of the chemicals in the water as well as the heat, which helps certain types of food sources grow, which they then want to consume. This then leads to it being a feeding hotspot as larger predators can also come to the vent to feed on other smaller organisms that are already feeding in the area. There are usually a high amount of animals found in the area of a hydrothermal vent, but not a wide variety of different animals as the temperature extreme is not suited for everyone in the deep sea. In our number six spot today, we have the Galapagos Islands. Okay, this is one of my favorite on this entire list because it's just 
It's so crazy. Basically, the Galapagos Islands were pretty inhospitable to life, and you might be thinking, well, things live there, so how could that be true? These islands emerged in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, sort of as the cap on a still active volcano. That still active part is definitely a key there. The heat from the volcanoes basically sterilized them, and not only this, but they were 600 miles from land. Everything that lives on the island now naturally found its way there. Plants with seeds who flew through the wind, animals that rode in somehow on a current, vegetation that came on the back of a turtle. It truly is just remarkable. Of course, humans have interfered now and brought some different species, but even so, it really is just a very cool origin story. In our number five spot today, we have a nuclear reactor. This is probably the one place we could all just fully agree that life shouldn't exist, right? Well, there is one bacteria that is so hardy and so tough, it can actually grow and thrive here. Dinococcus radiodurans is the most tough bacteria on Earth. It can withstand even the most extreme conditions such as cold, dehydration, vacuum, and acid. But the craziest part is that it is virtually radiation proof. These little microbes can withstand several thousand times the amount of radiation a human can withstand, as well as more radiation than any other bacteria on Earth. This superpowered bacteria is so strong that scientists can't quite figure out how it got this way. This has led to a hypothesis that suggests this bacteria may actually be from an alien planet, perhaps even Mars. Jury is still out on that for sure, but either way, a nuclear reactor is still pretty intense. In our number four spot today, we have the stratosphere. Yep. I really mean the stratosphere. This is the layer of the atmosphere of the Earth that sits about six miles above the ground. Deserts, such as the Sahara, are known for their massive dust storms that move millions of tons of soil each year, and there are tons and tons of microbes that move with them. Researchers have been able to collect microbes in the dust at altitudes of over 11 miles high. There are bacteria, there are fungi, there are viruses, there is stuff that you don't even want to know about there. This is all to say that even that high in the atmosphere, you could still get a cough. In our number three spot today, we have Lake Vostok. Many of us have heard of Atlantis, but have you heard of Lake Vostok? This lake is located in Antarctica, and it is so huge, it is one of the largest lakes in the entire world. The lake not only has a large surface area, but it's also quite deep, which only adds to the volume of this lake. It's the lakiest lake out there, and here's the thing about it. It is covered by ice, and not just any ice, but the East Antarctic Ice Sheet, which is just the largest ice sheet in the world. This subglacial lake has has ice so thick that we really don't know a lot about what lies beneath it, and this ice has been there for millions of years. But when the first samples of the actual lake water were taken, it became apparent that there may be species in this lake we know absolutely nothing about. So basically, it's just a lake that's been sealed for millions of years, and it's freezing cold, and life really does exist there. In our number two spot today, we have the Danakil Depression. The Danakil Depression is part of the Afar Triangle in Ethiopia, and it is a geological depression that came about as a result of Africa and Asia moving apart. The divergence of three tectonic plates caused rifting and volcanic activity. This place is the hottest place on Earth in terms of average year-round temperatures, and it is also one of the lowest place on Earth at 100 meters below sea level. There are active volcanoes in the area, there are salt springs, sulfur springs, and it only gets about four to eight inches of rain every year. What I'm saying is that the place is stunning and has an incredibly rich geological history, but it isn't very hospitable. Despite that, there are people who call this place home. The Afar people have called this area home for many years, and of course that poses the question of how. Well, the biggest industry in the Danakil Depression is salt, and many of the people who live here will mine salt with their hands and then take a two-day camel journey into the next town to sell it. The people who live here also have to deal with an average temperature of 35 degrees Celsius, but sometimes it can get as hot as 50 degrees Celsius. Somehow they have overcome the odds and the obstacles and managed to thrive in this extreme environment, and it is said that this was made possible over the centuries by their ability to adapt to need less food and water than other humans. Honestly, it's one of the most remarkable things I've ever heard. In our number one spot today, we have La Rinconada. This town is located near the Peruvian Andes, very close to a gold mine, and is actually the highest permanent settlement in the world at 5,100 meters above sea level. Between 2001 and 2009, the population of the town increased greatly because the price of gold rose 235% during that time. Because of the elevation, the town has an alpine tundra 
temperature climate and an average temperature of around 1 degree Celsius. The city has no running water or sewage, and the population of people who live here are working themselves to the bone in extremely dangerous mercury filled mines. They're also working under some pretty horrible conditions where they work 25 days of the month for no pay, and then 5 days of the month they can work for themselves and they're allowed to take as much ore as they can carry on their shoulders. There's no guarantee that the ore will have any gold in it, however, and this terrible system is why many of the town's residents live in poverty. The town is a six hour bus ride from the nearest city on unpaved roads, and there isn't really a regular bus schedule, which makes it a fairly difficult place to get to. Alright, guys, that has been our list for today. Thanks so much for checking it out. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlowski. I'll see you again soon. Bye.